And uh, we'll look here in this passage of Scripture together uh, again this evening. Ruth chapter number 1. We'll begin reading in verse number 1. And uh, we had y'all standing just a minute ago. If y'all give me just a few moments, I'll invite you to stand again. And uh, like I said uh, last week, I'm not trying to get your spiritual aerobics. I just feel like it's very important right before preaching you be able to get uh, those legs stretched one more time. Amen. And uh, so Ruth, chapter number one, when you find your place, I invite you to stand in reverence and honor the reading of the Word of God. Aren't you glad that we're not like it was in Ezra's day? Uh, those men, women, boys, and girls stood around and stood uh, for the reading of the Word of God. As the Bible said, they read it from morning until evening. Amen. And uh, I promise you'll be out before midnight tonight. Amen. Ruth chapter number one. I'm just kidding about that time, by the way. Amen. I'm going to try to get you out earlier than that. Amen. Ruth chapter number one and verse number one. The Bible says, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the, in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilion, Ephratites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left, and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And Malon and Chilion died, also both of them. And the women, uh, and the, excuse me, and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited His people in giving them bread. Now look with me at verse number 18. The Bible said, And when she saw that she was steadfastly, this is she, the first she is Naomi, second she is Ruth. When Naomi saw that Ruth was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. And so they too, so they too went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass that when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them, and they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing that the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth, the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. You may be seated. Let's bow for a word of prayer together this evening, and then we will get into the Word of God for tonight. Let's pray. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we bow in Your presence once again as thankfully and humbly as we know how. Thanking You, Lord, for another day. Thanking You, Lord, for another opportunity that we have to gather in the house of God. Thank You, Lord, uh, for what You have spoken to our hearts already this morning. And I pray that You would help us again tonight to convey the truth that You put on our hearts. Father, I pray that You'd help me as I preach the book of Ruth. Lord God, there is so much to be said in this book. Father, there, that there's no way I'd be able to deal with it all tonight. Lord, I wouldn't be able to deal with it all this month. Uh, but Lord, I pray that you would help me to say what you would have for me to say this evening. And Lord God, I pray that you would help me to get out of the way that you can do what you want to do. Lord God, I pray that you would uh, speak to each and every heart that's here today. Lord, if there is one heart that is lost and undone and never been saved, Lord, I pray that you'd speak to them and cause the uh, Lord God to uh, repent of their sins. And Lord God, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Amen. Father, I pray if there's one here that is like Naomi that's went to live and went and lived in Moab and they've walked away uh, from the relationship that you would have for them to have and they find themselves in a backslid condition. Lord, I pray that in the character of Naomi that you, the sweet spirit of God, would speak 
to their heart about the need that they have to, uh, Lord, to come back and to get things right and to restore that relationship with you. Father, I pray for the saints of God that have any other kind of a need and every other kind of a need. Lord, I cannot answer it tonight. I cannot help them tonight in and of myself. But Lord, I thank you that I know that you can. Lord, I praise your name that I know that you have an ability that's above mine. And Lord God, you can do what is in need of tonight. Father, we pray, Lord, for you to take over the service. Lord, I pray that for the rest of the service, Lord, you take over the preaching. Lord God, that you take over the invitation, that you would take over how it's being dealt with. Lord, I don't want to uh, try to do any any manipulating of a service. Lord, I know that, uh, that there's, there's people that stand in pulpits and call themselves preachers and they do uh, little of nothing more than just psychology and mess with people's minds and play with their emotions. Lord, I'm not interested in doing that tonight. Lord, there's many emotional things in this text, but I'm not interested in doing that tonight. Lord, I'm interested in just preaching the Word of God the way that it's written on the page. And Lord, we're trusting you to deal with our hearts or to finger around in our hearts and Lord, grip uh, our hearts and draw them closer to you. Lord, I pray that before it's said and done, you would help us to be, uh, to be obedient, to do the business that you would have for us to do with you. Lord, I pray that you would get the glory. Lord, that you would move in great power during the remainder of this service. Thank you, Lord, for what you've already done. And thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. And Lord, we praise you in advance for how you're going to answer these prayers. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. If you remember, we took our text out of the book of Ruth, chapter number 1 and verse number 20 this morning, uh, where Naomi had went back to Bethlehem, Judah, the land of her nativity, and uh, she uh, had come into the city, and those that were in the city, the Bible uses the phrase that they were moved about. Uh, they uh, were coming to her location. They all wanted to catch a glimpse of Naomi, Elimelech's wife, that had come back to uh, Bethlehem. And they asked the question in verse number 19, is this Naomi? That sin had, uh, had its visible effects on Naomi's life. I don't know whether it's uh, uh, upon uh, her attitude, her countenance. I'm not sure whether it's just the fact of her company that she has Ruth there with her. You can imagine what it would be like to be a child of God uh, being from Bethlehem, amen, and being one of the Hebrews and you uh, come in with a, uh, with a woman uh, who is clearly a Moabitish woman. Uh, no doubt these women, the, the Bible says you could just take a look at Ruth and find out that she was a Moabite. You didn't have to have a conversation with her. You didn't have to ask her any questions about where she was from. You just looked at Ruth and you could tell that girl is from Moab. She's a Moabitish girl. And no doubt, maybe Naomi, uh, Naomi uh, is coming into Bethlehem. And it could have been that they said, is this really Naomi that's coming in with that Moabite when the Jews aren't supposed to have anything to do with the Moabites? They're our enemies. They've always been our enemies. They've been enemies of our God. And here she is with a, Mo a Moabitish girl. They very well probably could have, uh, could have been a uh, 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 Trashing her parenting skills. Is that really Naomi, Elimelech's wife? She really let her sons marry a Moabitish girl. And they come back in. And she no doubt comes back uh, probably with her head hung low and in shame. And she tells them the answer to their question. They mention her name as Naomi. And she says in verse 20. And this is the, the, the text where we took our thought out of this morning. Where we returned this evening. Verse 20. The Bible said she said unto them. She answered their question. Call me not Naomi. Call me Mara. Call me not a pleasant one. That's what Naomi means. Call me Mara, which means bitter. For the Almighty had dealt very bitterly with me. She says in verse 21 that the way that she looked at her life was she had left, she had left Bethlehem, Judah. Uh, in verse 21, the Bible said, I went out full. I left this place with everything. I left this place full and satisfied and I've come back empty and barren with nothing to show for my time in Moab except a jaded and scarred life. Amen. And so we see here in these verses and we looked at this morning how she looked 
at her life as uh, as being dealt bitter things. I'm not saying necessarily that Naomi was bitter. I'm saying she says that God has handed her uh, bitter things, things that uh, parts of her life that metaphorically would have a bitter taste, things that uh, she did not plan for, she did not desire, things that she says is too severe uh, in her mind for something that uh, she would see as her as her ideal living situation. She says God has put his target on me. God has looked at me and he is dealing with me bitterly, very bitterly, the text says. Amen. And we began this morning, and I spent most of the time this morning uh, teaching us what a look at Naomi's life looked like through Naomi's eyes. You saw that she, uh, as she looked at her life, she saw the days where she was a bride, where she was married to Elimelech, chapter number 1. And these beginning few verses talk about her uh, being Elimelech's wife. She saw not only her, her as a bride, but he saw, he, she saw her boys. She had two sons. Uh, she was a mother to two sons. And those things brought great joy to her life. But then, uh, if you look down the history of her life through her eyes, no doubt she couldn't even think about her being a bride anymore. Those two boys that God had given her without remembering the three burials that she had uh, to experience in her life. Amen. We saw that. And how those burials brought about a life of barrenness where she felt like... Uh, she had nothing left. I went out full, but have come home again empty. And we, we closed this morning uh, noticing the thought, it looks like bitterness, but actually it's blessings. It looks like bitterness, but it's actually blessings. Amen. And I want to continue that thought. We looked at one of these blessings this morning. And the, the first blessing that we saw was that the bitter days in Naomi's life brought about a blessing which I believe was a great blessing in Naomi's life. And that was the blessing of Ruth. God brought Ruth to her. God brought a friend to Naomi. God, God turned a daughter-in-law into a best friend that later on in the text, the Bible says in chapter number 4, uh, became to her uh, better, than, uh, better than seven sons. Amen. And isn't it just like God? You lose two sons. And God will bring somebody in your life that the Bible says is better than seven. Amen. Uh, God's not all, not going to leave you empty-handed. Amen. God's going to bless uh, if you will do what He says. Amen. And thank God Naomi got right. She's a picture of a backslider that has backslid on God. And, and she was able to get things right. Amen. So there was the blessing of Ruth. And she never would have had that blessing of Ruth. Someone in the darkest days of her life that says, don't tell me to go away. Entreat me not to leave thee, she said. She said, I'm going with you all the way. And I'm thankful for those who are willing to stand with us through the fire. Uh, Proverbs 17, 17 says that a friend loveth at all times in the good and the bad. Amen. I thank God for the roofs in my life. Amen. So if it would have never been for the bitter things that Naomi is saying that God has dealt her, that God has extended to her, she would have missed out on the blessing of a roof. And when we look through Naomi's eyes, we do see those bitter things. But if you look through God's eyes, you'll see the blessings. Amen. So the bitterness brought the blessings of Ruth. But also tonight when we look through God's eyes, we see not only uh, that her bitterness brought her the blessing of Ruth, but I would say this as well, that, uh, that her bitterness, her those bitter things that was extended to her, that God had dealt her, brought her the blessing of repentance. Look at, uh, look at the text here in verse uh, number 1 again. Uh, let, let, me, let me just mention a few verses. Uh, let's look at verse number 6 together, first of all. Verse number 6, the Bible said, Then she arose with her daughter-in-law, daughters-in-law, that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited His people in giving them bread. Now let me say this tonight. I don't know how many of you in this building feel about the doctrine of repentance. 
I have found out that in our movement over these years, uh, over these last several years, really uh, kind of kicked up primarily back in the 70s and it died off for a while and now it's resurging with the new independent fundamental Baptist movement with Stephen Anderson out in, uh, in Arizona and, and uh, he's kind of revived this no repentance uh, I, I have a problem with that. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because you can see right. repentance all throughout the Bible. Right. You cannot have a preaching John the Baptist in the wilderness of Judah without a message of repentance. Right. You right. cannot have a preaching Savior. And by the way, John wasn't the only one preaching in Israel. Amen. Yeah. I'm glad to know that not only was our Savior a leader, not only was He a miracle worker, not only was He a man that invested in other men and in those disciples, not only was he a savior that climbed up Calvary, but Jesus was also a fire breathing preacher of the Word of God. Amen. And the Bible said that the same message John the Baptist preached when John uh, exited the scene. The Bible said Jesus picked the message right back up. Why? Because I believe Jesus thought the message needed to go on. Yes. Amen. 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 The Bible said that Jesus Himself preached, "Repent ye." Amen. Luke chapter number 13 and verse number 3. These are the words of Jesus. Jesus said, I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. That's not John's words, and that's not Josh's words. That's Jesus' words. Amen. He said, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And in the book of Ruth, we find a classic example of repentance. And I, I know there's a whole lot of preachers today that want to argue as to what repentance is. Look what the Bible says here. This is repentance. This is repentance in a nutshell. Whether you look at the Greek definition, whether you look at the English definition, or whether you look at uh, just, or just simply when the Word of God talks about repentance, in this passage we find repentance. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad that, it's, that repentance is available for saints as well. That's right. Yes. Aren't you? Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. Yes. I'm glad that a child of God can repent. There's some that say only sinners repent. Uh, but I'm, a, I'm of the opinion that uh, there's been times in my life that, that I've had to repent for things that I've done and yeah. tell God I'm not doing this anymore. Amen. Guess what Naomi had to do? She walked out of the will of God. She went to Moab. I, she, I, I believe with all my heart, I believe she followed the little lamp there. And, and I'm not preaching that tonight uh, because I'm planning on preaching our men about our home soon about Elimelech. But I believe with all of my heart uh, that, that, uh, that Naomi followed Elimelech there. I believe Elimelech led his family there. I believe Elimelech began to look at the uh, began to look at the physical situation and forgot the spiritual situation of his family. He began to look at feeding them instead of leaving them, amen, in the ways of God. And whether or not she followed him there uh, it, it, it's not a point for tonight, but she did go to Moab. Amen. She lived in that pagan land. Now, this was not what I was planning on preaching. And if you hear this in the next couple of weeks, just pretend like you haven't heard it before. Amen. And some of my other studies from yesterday is jumping out at me. But notice what they said in verse 1. I'm going to do my best to make sure I get back to where I'm going. Uh, but notice verse number 1. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons. The Bible said the reason why they went was number one because of a famine and because of that famine they decided we're going to Moab there's bread in Moab we're not going to starve to death in Moab so we're leaving to Mo we're leaving for Moab and we're only going to sojourn there let me give you the definition of the word sojourn the word sojourn means to dwell for a time it means to live in a place as a temporary resident it means, uh, it means to live there not only as a temporary <laughs> resident, but it means to live there as a stranger. In other words, you live there for a short period of time, you reside there, but you don't belong there. Is that ringing any bells this evening? Amen. They said, we're going to Moab and we're only going to sojourn there. Now look with me at verse number 4. By the time we come to verse number 4, Elimelech, Naomi... And their sons have come to uh, have come to Moab. Elimelech dies, 
And then in verse number 4, the Bible said those two boys are getting married. The Bible said they took them wives of the women of Moab. By the way, if you lead your family, and I know I'm getting ahead of myself in that other message, but if you lead your, if you lead your family into Moab, don't be surprised when they bring Moabites home. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. They took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orba, and the name of the other Ruth. And they <clears throat> sojourned there. They dwelled there about ten years. I don't know how you feel, and I, and I know now at the age that I the days that I have achieved in adulthood now, ten years doesn't seem as long as it used to. Yeah. Amen. To a ten-year-old, ten years is everything. Right, yeah. Amen. To a twelve-year-old, ten years is everything. Yeah. That's your whole life. Uh, but the older you get, 10 years don't seem like a whole lot. But if you're staying somewhere for 10 years, an actual temporary stay, it's no longer temporary. Right. Amen. Yep. They, their plan was to sojourn, to stay there temporarily. But sojourning was replaced by dwelling there. If you're dwelling there, that means you've got a house and you're, you've put down your stakes. Yep. They decided they were staying in Moab. The plan the very well may have been to stay there for a little while and be a stranger, but they began to dwell there. They made their home in Moab. There's a great danger in moving to Moab. There's a great day and a great danger in making your home in Moab. Moab being a picture of the world. If you want to just settle your life around worldly things and worldly ambitions, you may say, I'm only going to go out there and I'm just going to spend a little while out there. And I'm just going to sow my wild oats for a little while and I'm going to go there, but I'm coming back to Bethlehem. Chances are, friend, you will dwell in Moab and unless God has a Holy Ghost divine and visitation, you may never come back to Bethlehem. Right. Amen. You young people, listen to me. Right. Before you let somebody convince you to go out in the world and to sojourn in Moab, you think you're going to be there a little while, but you'll find out you'll spend some of the you'll spend a great portion of your life there. Yes, sir. And that's if you ever get to come back. God had to go to where she was. I'm amazed when the Bible said that she heard in the land of Moab. That God had visited His people in bringing in in giving them bread. Isn't it interesting that a word came from God in Moab? And I'm glad uh, to those that are dwelling in Moab. Y'all don't mind if I just preach this a little while while I'm here, Amen. It's not part of my message. I got a lot to go, but I hope y'all just forgive me, Amen, tonight. But can I just can I just say this, Amen? When we come when we come to this uh, passage of Scripture and we look at Naomi's life and her sojourning there and her spending that time there. Amen. There's a lot of there's a lot of danger in that. Amen. And we see that she uh, spent time in Moab and she spent uh, she spent that time there. Amen. And the, the Bible tells us, Amen. Look at we'll read verse number six again together. Uh, the Bible says she arose with those daughters in law that she might return uh, from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how the Lord had visited, look at that, visited his people. And giving them bread. Amen. She went to Moab on her own. But isn't it just like God to send a messenger to Moab? Amen. I'm glad to report to you that the same God that is ruling and reigning in Bethlehem, Judah, in the house of God, in the house of bread and praise where God is blessing. I'm glad He's the same God that rules and reigns in Moab. They may be worshiping false gods out in the world. They may be spending their time uh, giving their children them false idols. Do you think about the gods of Moab? you know uh, what they would do with the gods of Moab? Those those idols that the God, uh, that some of those Moabitish gods, the, the, some of those idols had outstretched hands and and every every uh, every time they wanted to appease their God, they would take something and, and, and increase the temperature of those hands to uh, boiling degrees, and they would take their babies, take their children, and throw them on those scalding hands as a sacrifice to their God. That's where Naomi, a Christian, remember her husband's name meant my God is king. Her husband was supposed to be a godly man. She led them, he, he, he led them there. They're sacrificing babies in Moab. They're killing their children. By the way, does that not sound like America? Amen. I can't read the book of Ruth 
without reading America right into the pages of, 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 of every time Moab is mentioned. Amen. I, I believe we have we have people all over this nation that are sacrificing their children to the uh, children to the gods of this world. Amen. When you start killing babies, friend, you're in Moab, and you will do you you can do your day level best, but unless God comes to you and gives you a message from heaven that God's blessing down at the house of God, and there is a better world, and there is a better land, and there is a better life, for you may never escape, my lad. I'm amazed that God got that message to them with everything. I'm not amazed that God can do it. I'm amazed that it got to, it got to Naomi, and Naomi was listening to it. What was that? And, and I heard a message on this this morning. I probably shouldn't listen to other preachers before I preach on something. But I was listening to Brother Brian McBride. He was preaching. One of the, if you want to hear some preaching on the roof, listen to Brian McBride. Good night. Hey, man, he's great, great on the book of Ruth. But he was, man, he was, he was preaching. And he was, he was preaching the house down about... Moab and he heard getting that message in Moab and he began to preach about this unnamed witness that uh, came in and told about uh, God visiting his people in Moab and, and he, he was preaching about that he said there was somebody that came by Moab with a message that God was blessing down at the house of God and he made this statement he was talking about how, uh, how you had this, this, this stranger was not complaining about the house of God but he was talking about how God was blessing uh, in Bethlehem. How God was blessing in the house of bread and praise. Amen. And he made this statement. He said there's Christians all over the world that will never be able to be an unnamed stranger uh, to a Naomi in their life that's living in Moab. And the reason is because we can't stop complaining about things that go on in church. Uh, the sermon was too long or those people didn't shake my hand yeah. or oh, that song service went too long or too short. I just didn't feel comfortable. And you complain and you complain and you complain and he said one of the reasons why there's people that are saved by the grace of God wandering in Moab is because you've got so many people murmuring in Bethlehem. Amen. I don't know about you but I want to be one of those witnesses. Amen. I want to be one of those un I don't have to get the glory for it. One of those unnamed witnesses. Amen. That will reach somebody in Moab. Amen. But because let me get back to where we need to be tonight. Because of that unnamed witness. Because of that person who gave them the word about, uh, the, gave them the word about God visiting His people in giving them bread. Notice what the Bible says in verse number 6. They had left Moab, or they had, they had went to Moab. They sinned. She backslid on God. And then the Bible said, Then she arose. She left where she was. She got up determined to go in another direction. That's repentance. That's right. You can get as complicated, you can get as you can get as complicated as you want. Mm -hmm. You can use a bunch of the, theological terms if you, if you want. I, I found out seminary terms don't help a lot of people in churches. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. You make it as complicated as you want. Yes, sir. You know what repentance is? you getting up from where you are and deciding to go in another direction. And guess why she was able to make that choice? was because God had come to her. Amen? You're not going to repent unless the Spirit of God is involved. Amen? The Spirit of God has to let you know that God has come and God is making a personal visit just for you. And He's got a message for you. And when you hear His message, then you can, upon His message, make the choice to change directions. And when you do, you know what you'll do? You'll say, God, I'm sorry for living in Moab. I'm coming back home. That's what repentance is. The Bible says she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return. There was her reasoning. From. There's that turning from and headed to. You're changing directions. Amen. That she would return from the country of Moab because for she had heard that message from that messenger. Amen. If the bitterness of losing her sons and her husband. Those days of barrenness where she went out full but has come home again empty. If she never would have lost it all, chances are she never would have repented. And I'm telling you, it, well, I, 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 I pray 
that God will do. There's some people that will not change. They will not repent. They will not go in another direction unless God does drastic things for them. I have seen it throughout my life that people, uh, there's people that will refuse God and refuse God and refuse God. Amen. Until God uh, causes them to uh, fall flat on their back where all they have, all they have is to look up at God and send up a prayer for help. And friend, in that moment, they'll repent. But they wouldn't have unless God allowed them to lose it all. Yeah. Chances are, you get so bad where your plans just so journey in Moab and you decide, I'm going to just stick around here. I'm going to dwell here. No doubt she had got comfortable. She's still a stranger. She doesn't belong in Moab. They can look at her and tell, that's a Jew. But she doesn't belong there. She doesn't look like she's from there. And I'm, 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 I'm amazed at all of the Christians that, uh, and I know there's, there's some that say they're Christians and they're living out in the world and chances are they've never been saved. But I've known some good, genuine believers who have spent more time in Moab than they needed to. And God had to do some things, some drastic things in their life to get them to change course and to head back to Bethlehem. Amen. 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 If it wasn't for these bigger things, chances are they only very well, never would have ever repented. Amen. We see in this passage of Scripture that Naomi's a picture of that backslider. Ruth is a picture of a sinner who gets saved. She forsook her gods to follow the true and the living God. We find in this passage of Scripture, not only does Naomi repent of her wickedness as a, as a believer, as a backslid believer, but we find Ruth repenting, amen, as a sinner that needed to get saved. As she goes with her mother-in-law. And as the Bible says here in our text. And when she saw verse 18. That she was steadfastly minded to go with her. Then she left speaking unto her. And so they, they two went. Until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass. When they were come to Bethlehem. Stop there. Think about what's going on. In those two verses. They left Moab. Which means, and the Bible said they come to Bethlehem. They began a journey toward Bethlehem with their backs toward Moab. Both of them together repented of living in Moab. Left Moab behind and they went back to Bethlehem. Naomi went back. Ruth for the first time went to Bethlehem, Judah. Naomi is a picture of a backslider repenting of their sin and getting right with God. Ruth is a picture of a lost sinner repenting of her sin and getting for the first time saved by the grace of God and having a relationship with Him. She forsook her gods to follow the true and the living God. The sad thing is, is that in verse number 6, the Bible said that she arose with her daughters, plural, in law. Orpah could have repented. Orpah could have to be with Naomi and Ruth as they left Moab and went to Bethlehem, Judah. But guess what? Orpah refused. If Naomi is a picture of a child of God that was backslidden getting right, and Ruth is a picture of a sinner who gets saved, Orpah is a picture of a sinner who does not get saved. And I think it's one of the saddest scenes if you can... And when I read some things in the Bible, I try to put myself there. I try to put myself in, 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 uh, in the world of Moab when that conversation is going on. And I can imagine that one of the saddest sights that you would ever see as a believer that has spiritual inclinations is to think about Orpah walking all the way back home. You know, the Bible said that she left Naomi and Ruth and she went back to her, went back to her home, went back to Moab, and then the Bible clearly states, and to her gods, her plural gods, her false gods, she had an opportunity to repent but went back to worshiping and serving her false gods. The God, the God of heaven is a God that offers repentance to yeah. all of us tonight right. that need to repent. If you're, if you're a child of God in here and you're not where you need to be, I pray that you tonight would choose to be a Naomi. Turn your back on the Moab world that you're living in. Get your heart right with God by turning your back on sin. Turn your back on living for the devil and doing your best saying, God, I'm coming home. I'm coming back to you. I'm going to serve you to the best of my ability with your help. 
Be in the only, amen. If you're lost in here and you need to get saved, I thank God that you can repent of your sins and you don't have to perish like Jesus said. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. You can repent tonight, choose to be a root and get your heart right with God, asking God to save you, amen. amen. Don't be like an orphan. Don't be like Orpah that went back home and heard God's had all of the opportunities to repent, but left. Yes, it was bitter things that brought them to repentance, but wouldn't you rather be Naomi right with God? Wouldn't you rather be Ruth right with God uh, than to miss out on the bitterness and miss the blessings of being, being able to repent? If she would have missed out on the bitterness, she would have missed the blessings. Yes, I think it's one of the most blessed things... <laughs> That this world has to offer, that our spiritual that our spiritual world even has to offer, and one of the most blessed things that there ever will be in your life and mine is to see someone repent of their sins and get saved. You want to talk about a blessing? I think repentance is a great blessing. Amen. Amen. Let me hurry with some of these. Number three: Not only did her bitterness bring her the blessing of Ruth and the blessing of repentance, but it also brought her the blessing of a return. Notice what the Bible says. I'm just going to state this and move on. Look at verse 19. The Bible says, So they too went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass that uh, when they came to pass, when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city moved about them and said, and they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty had dealt very bitterly with me. Look at verse 21. I went out full. And the Lord hath brought me home again. Can I say this? That the bitterness and the bitter things that God had dealt her to the point to where she became Mara, that bitter instead of Naomi Pleasant, the bitter things that God had given her, she may feel empty. She may feel like there's nothing left. She may feel like she has lost it all. But at least she's home. The blessing of it all is that she didn't stay in Moab. Friend, Elimelech would have been a godly man, but he died in Moab. Malon and Chilion had godly parents, but they died in Moab. I'm telling you, one of, one, one of the hardest heart-reaching things of this world that we live in is there's Christians who will leave their families out into Moab, leave their children out into Moab, and they will leave them there, and dad will die in Moab. And the boys will die in Moab. And the family will die in Moab. Friend, I don't want to go to Moab because I don't want to take the risk of my family dying in Moab. Amen. Naomi, Naomi said, I'm not going to die in Moab. Amen. Yes, it took it took very bitter things. It took hard things for her to make the, to make the decision to go to home. And she lost her husband. And she lost her babies. But she did not die in Moab. That's a blessing. She didn't die in Moab. That's right. The Bible said the Lord, and I don't know if Naomi knew what she was saying when she said I think sometimes we have the privilege of having an honor and the sacred honor of having the Word of God that we can look at and comb through and study. When Naomi said these words, chances are she's like many of us and she's speaking. She's not realizing really what she says. She's complaining about the life that she's known. But she said the Lord brought me home. Amen. I went out to Moab of my own fullest choice, but God brought me home. Amen. She didn't realize what she was saying is that the Lord, the fact that the Lord brought her home, God was using His own means to bring her home, and that was the bitter things that He dealt. I believe one of the main reasons why, if not the premier reason why God allowed the things to happen in Naomi's life that He allowed to happen to her is not to hurt her, but to get her home. Amen. She... Feels empty. But at least she's home. Amen. You know, if you study the book of Ruth, this may be a message for... I'm telling you, I've been in this thing this week. This may be a message for another day too, but there are great comparisons between the book of Ruth and Luke chapter number 15 and that prodigal son. You think about it, we read it just a moment ago. The Bible said, and she arose. Same wording you find about the prodigal yeah. son in Luke 15. Right. The Bible says here that the Lord hath brought me home again, or I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home empty. 
the Lord brought her home. Is that not exactly what happened to the prodigal son? He said, I will arise and I will go to my father. When the prodigal son in Luke, number, in Luke chapter 15 came back home, he came back home with nothing. He went out with an inheritance and he spent it all. He went out with joy and he came back in sorrow. He went out on top of the world and came back apologizing. He went out full. The Lord brought him home again empty. But he was home. And there was a father waiting all at home for him. Amen. Right. There was a family waiting at home for Amen. him. Amen. There, there was those festivities waiting at home for him. They, uh, they celebrated him home. He didn't have anything, but thank God he was home. Amen. Amen. And there may be some of you here tonight. You lived out in no boat no land long enough, and you may come back with nothing. But praise God, at least you'll be home. And it'll be a blessing for you to come home. If you, if you walk far away, from God. You've wandered far away from God. My encouragement with you to you tonight is to come home, come home. Oh, wanderer, come home. Amen. Yes. Be like Naomi. Enjoy this blessing of a return that she never would have known if she did not have those bitter things come her direction. Let me mention this. Look at chapter number 2 and verse number, verse number 6. Chapter number 2 and verse number 6. I'm going to I'm going to move through some of these things. Y'all bear with me tonight. Luke chapter number 2, verse number 1. We'll read, we'll read. We'll start in verse number 1. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth, a Moabite, said to Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean the ears of corn after him who's, uh, in whose sight I shall find grace. She said, I'm going to go to the field and somebody's going to have to show me grace. Somebody's going to have to be good to me. Amen. She came back according to the last verse of chapter number 1 in the beginning of barley harvest when the food was at its great and greatest in terms of quantity. She had left. Uh, they had left because they didn't have food in Bethlehem. Now they're returning and they got food in abundant supply because God had visited His people. But she said, I'm going to go to a field and I'm going to labor and I'm going to glean ears of corn after him uh, in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field. Now notice this. After the reapers. And her hat was to lie on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz who was of the kindred of Elimelech. I love that word hat. It was her hat. In other words, happenstance. It was her lot. This, that word hat shows the providence of God. God is ordaining her steps. God is putting her right where she needs to be. But the Bible says, she said, I'm going to go glean. I'm going to get the food that, that we need for our sustenance. And the Bible said that God brought her another blessing. God brought her the God brought Naomi the blessing of Ruth. And, and notice the Bible says that it was Naomi that had given her permission to go out in the field. She said, go to my daughter. In other words, you go out and you get us something. So whatever, whatever Ruth comes back with is also Naomi's. It will be Naomi's blessing that Ruth comes back with. And we see here that God sent Naomi and Ruth and gave them both repentance. But now Ruth is going to come straight in contact with another blessing that God used the bitter things in Naomi's life to bring to Naomi and Ruth. And that's these reapers. So there's Ruth, there's repentance. Amen. There's a return, but then there's reapers. These reapers, and I don't have time to really preach this, but uh, these reapers were spiritual men. They come to Boaz. Boaz speaks to them. Uh, he says, the Lord bless you. And these reapers said, the Lord bless thee. In verse number 6. They wanted to see Boaz and others blessed of the Lord. These were spiritual men. They had a spiritual understanding of the blessings of the Lord. They were spiritual men, but they were also submissive men. Verse 15 says, Boaz commanded them. Boaz spoke commands and they did what, what, what Boaz said. Amen. They were submitted to the will and the authority of Boaz. They not only that, but they were serving men. They were spiritual men. They were submissive men. They were serving men. Verse 2, verse 8, and verse 9 talks about they were laboring in the field. They were hardworking men serving their master, Boaz, in the field. And I don't know about you, but if you've ever said, I, I haven't. I've heard great stories from my grandparents, though. If you spend a whole lot of time working out in a field, you'll find out there's a lot of service to it. There's a lot of hard work to it. Amen. 
These men were serving uh, men, but then they were also sensitive men. Verse 15 through 18, you'll find when you read those three verses that at Boaz's command, they did their best to be sensitive to what Naomi and Ruth needed. Boaz told them to make sure Ruth's taken care of. Man, they were sensitive to her, their plight. Naomi had returned from to Bethlehem, Judah, with ten years of the effects of sin on her. She returned with her daughter-in-law uh, from a pagan land and was able, because of these reapers that God had put in their life, was able to receive the blessings of God. That may not mean anything to you, but who is He giving His blessings to? A Moabitish girl. Someone that is not at home in Bethlehem. Someone that does not belong here. The only reason why she got anything uh, from Boaz, it was because uh, Boaz had commanded his servant uh, to show grace to her. To give her handfuls of purpose. A girl that had no purpose was given not just a little purpose, but handfuls of purpose. They would leave those blessings and drop uh, that, those blessings and, and drop those things that they needed. Amen. 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 You know what these reapers signify to Naomi? Because there was going to be a time to where she got all of this. If you read these chapters, you'll find out they're leaving handfuls of purpose. Naomi come, and, uh, uh, Ruth comes back to the house and Naomi, she's carrying more than she can hold. And it causes Naomi to look at her and say, where did you get all of that? Where did that come from? And she said, Boaz blessed me with it. Boaz gave it to me. And friend, I'm telling you what, it's been part of the message, but I'm glad to know that friend, when you and I have something to do with Boaz, and we have our heavenly Boaz in our life, we'll come back home with blessings like this that we cannot hold. Amen. 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 They'll cause people to look at you and say, where'd you get all that? Yes. You'll say, Boaz gave it to Amen. 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 Jesus gave yeah. it to me. Amen. Amen. She comes home, and she comes home with all of Amen. those blessings. It caused Naomi to ask that question. And Naomi I was able to say, I got this from Boaz. Boaz gave this to me. And Naomi got the blessings that God had given to Ruth through those reapers. What are the reapers a message of? Naomi, you left. You walked away from me. You backslid on me. But I'm not through with you yet. I'm not done helping you. I'm not done aiding you. You repented of your sins. You may have been broken in Moab, but you repented of your sins. And I've still got blessings for you. I'm not done with you. Amen. These reapers was a blessing to Naomi, and it took the bitter things to bring her there. Amen. Not only that, but we see the blessing of rejoicing. Look at chapter number 20, verse, or chapter number 2 and verse number 20. There was a blessing of rejoicing. If it wasn't for these bitter things, Naomi would never be able to rejoice this way. Chapter 2, verse 20 says, And Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, here's, here's when she comes back with all of that grain and all of that food. She comes back with big arms full of food. Naomi looks at her, and when she finds out who it was, the man's name, verse 19, with whom I wrote today, is Boaz. Naomi said unto the, her daughter-in-law, Blessed, and think, look at this passage and see what a difference repenting of your sin makes in your attitude and the way you look at things. She says, Blessed be he of the Lord who hath not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, The, the man is next of kin unto us, one of our, of our near kinsmen. Naomi was able through those bitter things to say, blessed be he of the Lord. She had lost her spirituality uh, when she walked away from God. You don't see her speaking spiritual talk here. She says, blessed be he of the Lord. Amen. I think about Naomi and her and her uh, rejoicing in Moab. She once was pleasant, but Moab had turned her into Mara, into bitterness. Now she is able to rejoice. And God, if God had never allowed that bitterness, she would never have been able to enjoy the blessing of rejoicing. Think about Psalm 137. I'm not going to make you turn there, but in Psalm 137, you'll find a testimony of the children of Israel in uh, Babylonian captivity. And one of the things that they mentioned about that Babylonian captivity was that captivity is also a picture of backsliding. The Bible said by the river, Psalm 137, by the rivers of Babylon, 
There we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our hearts upon the willows in the midst thereof. For, that, for there they that carried us away, re, uh, captive, required of us a song. Insert their rejoicing. These Babylonians, these Jews rejoiced in song. They required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth. That's happy songs. Say, sing us one of the songs of Zion. Israel was known for their singing, for their hymns, for their psalms. And then this question is posed. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Can I just say this? There wasn't much rejoicing going on in Moab. There wasn't much singing going on in Moab. There wasn't much blessing be he of the Lord going on in Moab. Why? Because she wasn't where she was supposed to be. When you're out of the will of God and you are captive by your sin, you do not have a song to sing because what do you sing about when you're backslidden? Mm, that's good. Every song you sing reminds you of the spiritual distance that you are between uh, you and God. You're not singing the songs of Zion. You're not singing the hymns of the faith. You're not singing songs of mirth and gladness. You're not worshiping the Lord uh, through your singing and rejoicing when you're in Moab. If you are, chances are it's probably up front. That's one of the reasons why you see people get out of church and all of a sudden they're on country music radio. Yeah. That's why they're on the rock and roll channel. The reason is those gospel songs remind them of how far they are away from God. But that country song doesn't remind them of their spiritual condition. That rock song doesn't remind them of their spiritual condition. Because if you're saved by the grace of God, you cannot sing in Moab. You're not going to rejoice in Moab. You're not going to rejoice in Babylon. Amen. They had no joy uh, to sing. They could not sing uh, songs of mirth. Amen. So when, when Moab in this passage in the book of Ruth was Naomi's, Naomi's Babylon, she could not rejoice because she was in a strange land. But when she repented of her sin, the book of Ruth tells us that now she is able to rejoice. God put bitterness in her life that led to her repentance. It led to her return, and now she's able to rejoice. Amen. Amen. We also see that there is this blessing of redemption. Several times in Ruth, Boaz is mentioned as their kinsman. This is necessary in order for Boaz to be their kinsman redeemer. If he's not a kinsman, he cannot be their kinsman redeemer. A kinsman redeemer, as I said before, is a male relative who according to the various laws of the books of Moses had the responsibility or privilege to act on behalf of a relative that was in trouble, danger, or need. It is, he is the one who delivers. He was one who would rescue. He is one who would redeem property or people. When Naomi's husbands and sons died, she was left penniless and without a provider or a protector. When Boaz purchased or redeemed all that was Naomi's husband, Elimelech, not only was Naomi redeemed, but Ruth, was also redeemed. Amen. We, and no, notice what we find here. Look at Ruth chapter number 4 and verse number 13. Ruth chapter number, verse number 10. Let's start there. Ruth chapter number 10. I have a lot that I'm going to make real short on this point. Ruth chapter number 10. What will redemption do for you? Redemption in the Bible is a word of salvation. What will redemption do for you? It will cause a change. Y'all stay with me tonight in just a few more minutes. It will cause a change. The, Naomi's whole life situation was different because Boaz had redeemed them. She had nothing and no one, no provider, no protector. Amen. She had nothing left. She was penniless and she was at the mercy of her circumstances. But when Boaz came by and redeemed them and bought them back and he was of the right family and he had the wealth that he needed and he was willing like we saw this morning, their whole situation changed. I believe Ruth even changed. Look at this. Right. I believe there was a spirit. I believe there's physical redemption here. Naomi was redeemed physically. Ruth was redeemed both physically with her physical circumstances and spiritually when she said, Thy God shall be my God. Look at verse 10. Notice what the passage calls her. More, moreover, Ruth the Moabitess. Now look at verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth. You see what's missing? When you see Ruth mentioned throughout the book of Ruth, 
almost every passage we've read tonight and this morning, every passage called her Ruth the Moabitess. Ruth the Moabitess. Ruth the Moabitess. Tagged to her name was the sinful land that she came from. She was always recognized as a Moabitess. After she gets hooked up with Boaz, after they have a wedding, she is no longer known. Uh, after he redeems her, brings her into his family, makes her his wife, she's no longer a Moabitess anymore. She's just Ruth. Amen. The wife of Boaz. Can I say this? You were a sinner. You, were, you did belong to Moab. But thank God we began a relationship with our heavenly Boaz. He redeemed us. He brought us back. He brought us in as His bride. Amen. And because He brought us in as His bride, we're no longer seen as sinners in the eyes of God. We are seen uh, as who we are, the wife, uh, the wife of our heavenly Boaz, the bride of Christ. Amen. 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 Redemption meant the world to her, meant the whole, the whole world. And Naomi and Ruth had changed. And if it wasn't for the bitter things, they would have missed out on redemption. Lastly, I close with this. If there would have never been any bitter things that God had sent into her life, she would have missed out on the blessing of relationships. She got to enjoy these relationships that she never had before. Consider chapter number 4 and verse number 13. We see that there's a wedding day. The Bible says, And so Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went in on and when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. And if you if you study down into this passage, the Bible said, verse 14, the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which hath not left, left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name might be famous in Israel, and he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life. She didn't have anything. Now she's getting things restored. Amen. And a nourisher of thine own age, uh, old age, uh, for thy daughter-in-law which loveth thee is better to thee than seven sons hath borne him. And Naomi took Ruth, or took uh, the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. And the women, uh, and the women, her neighbors gave it a name, saying, There is born a son to Naomi. Now isn't that interesting? Yeah. You talk about relationships here. Because uh, there was redemption. Because those bitter things brought relationships into her life. She saw that there was a Boaz that came on wedding day. There was a bride. Her daughter-in-law, Ruth, became a bride. And then there was a baby, Obed, that came from it. Amen. Those are new relationships. You look at this, not only the wedding day, but the women's declarations. Amen. You'll find out, she said, that all of those things, that connection with that child and those new relationships. Ruth is the one that gave birth to Obed. Boaz and Ruth are the parents of Obed. But the Bible says a child, a, a baby, is born to Naomi. Naomi is the one being given the credit for these relationships. It is being accredited to Naomi. And I believe God wanted us to know she did go out full and she came back empty. But God didn't let her stay that way. God gave her more than she had before. Amen. She had Boaz now. Uh, amen. She had uh, her daughter-in-law was, ma was married as a bride. There was, uh, there was a baby. Amen. Uh, uh, Obed. Amen. Think about this. Uh, the Bible said that Naomi took that child and laid it, verse 16, to her bosom and became nurse on it. And notice what the women said. These witness descendants here. There was a wedding day. There was women, the women's declaration. But then we see the witness descendants. The Bible said the women, her neighbors, gave it a name. I think that's interesting. They let somebody else name their baby. Saying there is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. Do you know what Obed means? Worshiper. The bitter things brought worship into Naomi's life. Brought Obed, a worshiper, into Naomi's life. And I know y'all heard this before. But guess, guess where Obed falls? In, in. The, 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 the lineage here. The Bible said there was a child that was born to Naomi called Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Amen. When God took those bitter things and gave her a blessing of relationships, it created a line from which David would come. 
and the line from which David the king would come. Matthew chapter number 1 says it's the same line that Jesus would come through. Guess what happened when God turned to their bitter face into blessing? We were rejoicing about a heavenly Boaz tonight and the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're talking about a physical Boaz because there was a physical Boaz. The bitter things brought Naomi and Ruth together. Brought Ruth and Naomi to Boaz and Boaz and Ruth got to begin and begotten Amen had Obed and so came David and all down through the line so came our heavenly Boaz the Lord Jesus Christ Matthew chapter number 1 I find it interesting if you read Matthew 1 5 it says in Solomon we got Boaz of Rechab isn't that interesting I think with all my heart, one of the reasons why Boaz was so willing and able to receive Ruth as his wife is because of who Boaz's mama was. Y'all remember there in Joshua chapter number two, those spies came. Or you, you have uh, you have those those men come uh, into there. Uh, you have Joshua come in and they come into the house of a harlot named Rahab. Guess what happened when God saved Rahab? Uh, that when the harlot was saved by the scarlet, as Brother Joe Arthur would say, Rahab got saved and had a baby boy named Boaz. I believe when he saw Ruth out in that field, he was reminded of his mama who was a harlot and was not part of the family of God. But when you read Matthew chapter number one, not only is not only is Boaz mentioned. Rahab is mentioned. That's right. Not only is Rahab that harlot mentioned. By the way, it doesn't call Rahab the harlot anymore either. Right. It just says Rahab. Thank God what redemption will do. And Boaz begot Obed of Ruth. That Moabitish girl that took off the Moabites gave her the name just being the wife of Boaz from the time she got, she got wedded to Boaz. All she is ever recognized as is Boaz's wife never for her sin to bother her in terms of her testimony ever again. There were some relationships that came. She was able to be in the line of Jesus Christ because God had put bitter things in her life. Let me encourage you there's some times in our life where it looks like bitterness is all around us. That the Almighty has dealt very, very bitterly with you and I and we don't know why God is doing this to me. It very well could be that what you're looking at and seeing is bitterness is actually blessings. And God has brought blessings your way. So next time you feel that God has done you wrong in dealing severely, before you say God has dealt very bitterly, before you ever tell anybody else, God is dealing with me bitterly. You say to yourself and to the Lord, God, I'm not, I don't understand why all of these things are happening and it seems like bitterness. But I'm just, I, I cannot wait to see how you're going to show me the blessings through all of this. Seven blessings that God took, took bitterness that was beyond bitter things. That was beyond any of our imagination. Four things that we saw, those bitter things, turned them in to seven blessings. And by the way, seven is the number of completion. Yeah. He completed her story by giving her blessings. Amen. Let God complete your story. I don't know how you feel about areas in your life. You may be looking at bitter things. Why don't you tell God tonight, God, I'm going to stay with you. I'm going to stay right here in Bethlehem. I'm not leaving for Moab. I'm going to stay right here in Bethlehem and wait for you to show me the blessings in the business. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Thank you so much for your patience tonight. Thank you for letting me finish that.